All right, Kanu, tell us about the Khan experience. What is it like? Well, it's the it's the usual experience, Vikram. Uh, uh, there are many films, there are beautiful films, and uh, you know there are many filmmakers from all across the world. It's the best place to be with some of the best cinema playing around you. So it's always a pleasure, you know, just to be able to come and see what is happening, what is the latest in cinema, and and what what filmmakers from across the world are are doing. It's like a nice little mela, and so we are enjoying the mela. Okay, Kanu, uh, uh, talk to us a little bit about a film like Agra. The, the clear theme that you're looking out there, and it's a theme that you're familiar with, I guess, is the dynamics of families. How do families work, especially in small town setting? This clearly is a subject that seems to be very close to your heart. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Agra specifically, I think, is a film about sexuality and sexual repression. And it look at it. It looks at the idea of physical spaces, the physical spaces that we inhabit. So it's about how our sexuality and our sexual lives affect the physical spaces that we live in, and how in turn the physical spaces end up affecting how we express ourselves sexually. So uh, you know, it really got seeded from uh, my growing up years in Delhi, uh, 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 early years in Patiala, Punjab, then Delhi, then later even in Calcutta as a, as a young man growing up, I saw that there was not a lot of space around me. And then I thought that I was still privileged. You know, I'm still middle class. I live in a three-bedroom house. Uh, but, but I saw so many stories around me, so many young boys, men struggling uh, to express their sexuality and to express themselves with other women. And in many ways, you know, I sensed a certain repressed violence around this. And, and we've all been privy to that sort of, those sort of bursts of violence in, our, in, in life around us over, over the last few years, uh, especially since Nirbhaya, it's been in the spotlight. But we eventually have no insight into the lives of these men, uh, into the lives of these, these boys, uh, also especially because we, we live in such a deeply patriarchal society. And within the patriarchal society now, given the whole Me Too movement and, and all that, it's become even more difficult for men to express themselves in a certain way uh, uh, and to find articulation for the, what they might be feeling. Kanu, this crucial question that you address in Agra, the question of sexual violence, when it comes to something like rape, when it comes to sexual violence also within the family, uh, it's a big story here in India. It needs to be told a lot more, discussed a lot more. A lot of people, after many of the rapes that have taken place out here, say it's linked to power dynamics. You seem to be saying it can also be linked to sexual repression, and that repression can be influenced by a lack of privacy, if I understand you correctly. Correctly. Absolutely. Matlab, it, there's a, there, there can be a myriad reasons. There are probably hundreds of reasons. But I think, I, 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 you know, when I started exploring, when I started writing the screenplay, I somehow felt like we needed a very human in into understanding uh, this person, however difficult a character this might be, however unacceptable, uh, unacceptable and whatever dastardly things he might end up doing, and I'm speci specifically here talking about Guru, the protagonist of Agra, I felt like we really needed to look at Guru from within, from inside, and try to understand what's really going on with him uh, 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 to be able to have any hope of understanding sexual repression and, and violence so that he actually kabhi khatam karne ka chance ho. Because after it happens, if we just other the person and say, Aray, isne ye kar diya, abhi isko band kar to, then that's no point. It's we are, we are never really truly going to be able to be any closer to solving it. Uh, and the most human way of understanding uh, uh, this for me was in all its socio-political cultural glory. And I think the very simple idea of the spaces that we inhabit and the the transactionality in all our relationships today. You know, there's human transactionality in all these relationships. And that combines very, very closely with the idea of the limited space. Uh, I mean, we are, the, we are the most populous country in the world or will be very soon. And we, compared to China, we have very little landmass. So we're just packed in like a, like a, a tin of cardines, you know, anyway. So, so yeah, so that's somewhere where I was trying to go and, and, and play with this. 
Uh, Kanun, I just to understand the dynamics of how the industry is increasingly moving. Now, you as a filmmaker, when you're making the sort of films that you love to make, these are not necessarily films that are designed for the mass audience. There used to be a time when people used to say, we want to make films that are meaningful, that are telling a certain story, popularly, I guess, called art cinema, and it is meant to be shown at film festivals. It's, it's meant for places like Toronto or Cannes. Now, is that entire space opening up because Presumably, many of these films could do well uh, on OTT or movie or other such, such uh, platforms. Is that change started to meaningfully happen already or not yet? Or no? I, I'm not so sure, Vikram, to be honest. Uh, 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 in fact, I feel somewhere the space is shrinking. Uh, because anyway, cinema overall has, has taken, all, all sorts of cinema has taken a little bit of hit in the post-pandemic world. We are still recovering. Uh, effect of that anyway goes towards art house cinema because it's not traditionally valued uh, and that to me is really the sad part because uh, there is very little uh, space for any sort of nuanced uh, uh, forget cinema in, you know in all forms of art I, I think the most crucial thing that I'm observing uh, as an artist is that the space for nuance is completely dis uh, disappearing and that harks back, I feel, to a much larger cultural problem because the space for nuance in our culture is, is disappearing. I mean, we culturally Indians were the most nuanced people on the planet. We were the ones who never had to take a position. We could say, Achha, right wing mein ye achha hai, ye bura hai, left mein ye achha hai, ye bura hai. And, you know, we, we used to be, be uh, uh, we, we, we used to find great pleasure in being in the center. But now we, are, we live in times where you have to take a position. You can't be on either side. And I think the effects of that are being felt everywhere. And, and art just reflects uh, life as it happens around you. Yeah, I kind of you're preaching to the converted. I'm, I'm a journalist and I remember the time when it used to be a virtue to tell an unbiased story and being balanced about it. Now, you know, it's not necessarily the way it should be. You're supposed to be yelling and shouting and having a particular point of view. So, yeah, preaching to the converted. But thank you so much for joining thank us. You. All thank the best so and many, many congratulations for that uh, smash success at Khan and that, that five-minute uh, standing ovation that you actually got. Uh, Kanu Bell, thank you so much. So much for joining us.